Welcome to Taos, New Mexico. I'm Pat Woodall. I'm an artist and I live here. You're at my home and studio here in Des Montes, an area about eight miles north of Taos. My wife Carmen and I live here. We built this place together. We've had this place for over 25 years. My kids have grown up here. We had a wonderful time and now they're off in college. and I get even more time to make art. My work's all about excitement, color, and having fun. That's the way I've tried to live my life. I've enjoyed it very much, and what I want to show you is the new stuff that I'm doing these days that I feel like is cutting edge art. It's wonderful work. It's got everything in it that makes up my life in the moment, and the moment is what it's all about. I want you to enjoy yourself while you're here. I'm going to try and show you a selection of my work. I'm going to try and show you some of the oils that I do, the watercolors that I do, the abstract work, and also monotypes. So there's a whole world of art that you can enjoy here. It's about 37 steps from the house to the studio. I go there at least five, six times a day. I enjoy every time I do. When I get there, it's like the place of my dreams. So come along and I'll take, I'll take you there. Hello, Sunny. Well, welcome to my studio. This is a piece I was working on last night. It's a place that's not far from here. It's down in the Hondo Canyon, next to the Rio Grande and the Rio Hondo. I went down and sketched it plain air, and then I brought it back here, and I started working on it last night. There's a few variables when it comes to painting that you use. Of course, there's brush sizes. Um, these are some of the typical brushes that I use. Um, and also I use a palette knife. Uh, almost invariably in my work, there'll be some palette knife work in it. For instance, the palette knife work up in this area up here, and some of it down in here. Just about all over the canvas you'll find a few strokes from the palette knife. And then brush strokes, let's talk about brush strokes. Brush strokes can be used for contour, color, uh, picking up four or five different colors at once and then just taking a chance and popping it into one place. It, some of the most beautiful things happen when you just pick up some oil paint. You, there's weight on the brush. You can feel it and you can just take yourself and make a mark. When you make a mark, I try and make a mark in a positive way where there's one mark, not go over it and then back again. That's almost like trying to erase it. So all of the marks that I try and make on this canvas, they were just done once. If I find myself going back over, I tend to walk away from the canvas and come back to it because what I'm doing is my mind's working. And I want my mind totally out of this. I want to respond to this and to this and to this. That's what these are. That's how they're built. These shapes wandering through the sky, sort of of a piece, each one different, almost mushroom colors up here. I love those rich ochre, earthy kind of tones. If you look at a, a cloud out here in New Mexico, you'll always see some reflected light underneath the cloud, and oftentimes it'll be a golden light like this, or an orange or a reddish kind of a light. And the mountain is all about shape, color. Um, in this case, I didn't want to paint shadows on the mountain because what a lot of the clouds had blocked areas of the, of the mountain, and so there were cloud shadows on them. There's also a cloud shadow down here on the mesa going across the river. I didn't really paint shadow colors, you know, like graying down a color to make it look like a shadow, but used bright, vibrant colors to indicate shadows. And the shape of the color itself forms the shape of the mountain. Down here in the gorge, in the, in the river, you can see the rocky cliffs, those red rocks. Sometimes I've been down to paint the, the, uh, the, the Rio Grande Canyon and I'll stand there for hours. 
working on a painting. And then after, I don't know how long, all of a sudden you'll start to see these colors in those rocks. They look like they're kind of brown, like iron oxide when you first look at them. But invariably, when you look at them long enough, there's these colors that pop out of them. These are some of the colors that I see when I do that. Cedar trees over here, beautiful purple shadow down in this area, and reflections of the rocky cliffs behind. That's the things that attracted me to the painting. So you got the sky, you've got the mountains, you've got the river all the things that make Taos special. I wanted to show you one more very interesting piece. It's very recent also in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks. And it's a, uh, an abstracted piece. What I saw was, again, the, um, uh, you know, working with that mountain theme of shape and color and form and the river in front of it. It's almost like a close-up of, of a bend in the river. But, uh, the way that the light was that particular day, um, it, it, this river bank over here with all the pinon trees around it, and I was on a bluff with a chamisa in the front here, looking down on the river. Um, I had some acrylics with me, some acrylic paints, and I rough, roughed it in very broadly in large uh, 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 patches of color with the acrylics. I only had about four colors. And then I came and I made this border, and the border when I was going around it, it was just very New Mexico, very uh, crosses and colors and shapes and clouds and things like that. And then over here, I wanted more mountain, and so I let it bleed off on this one side. So I've got an incomplete border around framing this, this particular view of the river and the mountain, and I found it very visually exciting. So I thought you might enjoy that one. Uh, let me show you an example of a still life that's under construction. I'm building up layers of color on it. It's uh, over here in the corner, and uh, I paint right here at the, at, in this position. Usually what I do is I'll pull a chair up over here. I'll have my palette here. I'll have my, my oils, oils here, and I'll work about this height on something like this and work my way into it. This is a still life about sunflowers and the light on the sunflowers. I'm very happy with it. It's a beautiful cobalt blue and pink vase um, that we found uh, down in Santa Fe at a, at a yard sale actually and I've been using it. These sunflowers are just as pretty as they look. They're reds and oranges and yellows. It's all about brush strokes here. All about the brush strokes, the way that the light comes down on top of these sunflowers and the way that the light on this white wall behind it showed it and pushed it forward. You can see the the uh, fluid color that's on this canvas. I thought you'd enjoy that one. When we were talking outside, I mentioned that I had been doing some to what I consider cutting edge watercolor work. They're, they're like prints. Uh, in the fact that they are on, on arch paper or, or printing paper. However, they're, they're one-of-a-kind works on watercolor. And what I've been doing is I've been taping the edge and using a full sheet. And then I've been using a roller and a brush to paint in these watercolors. I have a lot of windows here in the studio, as you can see on both sides. And uh, they, have, they have pull strings on them. And so what I did is I've been looking out the window and seeing shapes and colors outside. And then from that, I've been making works on paper. Let me show you a few of those. This is one called Balance. When we're looking at these current oils and watercolors, it's, uh, it's got to be fascinating for a collector who's watched my work from the early days and seen the colors, see the form, the shapes, and then to look at this, this new format for my work and, and, and know that these little steps, this step from one painting to the next, these baby steps that an artist takes are so important into what he can do the next time that he enters into a canvas. And everything builds one time after another on the painting before. It's, it's like your, your fingerprints. That's what these paintings are. They're, they're, they're baby steps one after another. And it culminates in the next painting and you go on from there.
Also, some new pieces I've been doing. There's two of them. Uh, these are on oversized uh, paper mats. Um, they're drip pieces done with gouache and watercolor. And I thought you'd find them interesting. The, uh, the bands, the drips, and the color changes, and especially this bleed spot in the middle. A wonderful piece. Has images of earth and sky, uh, sand and water, um, atmosphere, sunsets, just about everything rolled into one. And another piece, uh, inverted the other way, sideways, uh, but interesting, the, the bands of color, the drip marks, and the diffusion in the middle. I thought it was very strong, very uh, electric, the energy that was in it. Um, food for thought, so to speak. Thing you, things that you wouldn't ordinarily make. I think that's what, what the creation of art is all about. You surprise yourself sometimes. These surprised me more representational images that I've created using the same techniques of roller and brush and washing out the canvas. You can see this is a cloudburst down onto the mountains of New Mexico. Thanks a lot for joining me this morning. I've been able to show you the work that I'm doing right now. You can enjoy much more of my work at patwoodall.com on the internet. You can find my gallery representation there. And you can come to visit me on my email. There's a place where you can check in and send me your thoughts on my work. I've really enjoyed having you here and I hope to see you soon. <music>